The snow has almost completely melted away and the temperatures are rising, which means the Quinnipiac spring sports season is in full swing. On tonight's special edition of Bobcat Breakdown, we'll chat with Q lacrosse star Kira Aquat live in studio, and I'll give you some of my predictions for a couple of Bobcats teams. All that and more next on Bobcat Breakdown. Hello everyone and welcome to this special edition of Bobcat Breakdown. I'm Mark Spillane. The snow and rain has prevented the Quinnipiac baseball team from playing at home so far this season, but it hasn't stopped the Bobcats from playing well. QU is off to a 6-3 start in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference and has been powered offensively by five hitters with at least 25 hits. On the mound, Thomas Jenkins and Justin Thomas have each picked up two conference victories in three appearances to lead the way. On the softball diamond, the Bobcats have definitive strengths and weaknesses. Senior Nikki Barber is hitting well over 400 with three home runs, while Hannah Lindsley has smacked five homers herself for 17 runs batted in. But QU's record of just 6-21 and 21 can be explained by the team ERA of nearly seven. And with pitching like that, even the best offenses would struggle to keep up. Now that we're all caught up to speed on what's happened so far for each squad, it's prediction time. Let's start with the baseball team, whose 6-3 and three record in the conference is currently good for third place. The Bobcats have a lineup that has proven to be deep enough for success, and if Scott Donahue and company can continue to set the table for the RBI machine that is Vin Galetti, the Bobcats will be dangerous. Couple that with the 1-2 punch of Jenkins and Thomas on the mound, and I think QU can make a run to the conference finals for a showdown with one of the max yearly powerhouses like Siena or Canisius. Now moving back to softball, it's hard to imagine this team having much success down the stretch based upon its track record thus far. The top six softball teams make the MAC tournament each year, and even though the Bobcats currently sit in seventh, I don't believe they'll be able to sneak into the postseason. And even if they do, I would expect a first-round exit. It's time for a quick break on our special edition of Bobcat Breakdown, but when we come back, QU Women's Across star Kira Aquat will join me in, live, in the studio live for an interview. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services, from basic cuts and colors to lash extensions and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your cue card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203-239-6477 to make your next appointment at A Sheer Sensation. Welcome back to Bobcat Breakdown. I'm now joined by Quinnipiac Women's Across all-time leading scorer, Kira Aquat. Kira, thanks for joining me. No problem. All right, Kira, let's start off with the fact that I just mentioned you're the all-time leading scorer. You just broke the record last week against Monmouth. What was it like taking over the all-time top spot? It's a little weird. Um, coming back, like looking back four years ago, I never would have thought that I would break the record especially since I was playing with such great talent. But honestly, I wouldn't have been able to do it without my teammates because they made the passes to get me the goals. They, I made the passes, and they had to catch it and finish. So I had to rely on them, and they had to rely on me to get where I am. So You mentioned some of the talent that you've played with. One of the people that jumps out is Sarah Allen. She was the previous record holder with 194 points. You passed her with 195 that day. You're now up to 202. What was it like? passing her, especially as somebody that 
when you showed up at Quinnipiac, your first two years, she was like the go-to girl on the team. What was it like? Um, I just really looked up to her, honestly. She, she was such a talent and she was such a leader, so I, I learned a lot from her. And we played two different games, but it was, it was fun playing with her. How do you think you guys complimented each other? You said that, you know, two different games, two different styles. Yeah. Uh, she was more of like the quarterback in the sense that she played behind the net and I was more of an up top on the top of the eight meter. So we complimented each other in the way like I would know when she was about to pass the ball on the eight. Like we had this kind of telepathy about it, I guess. Um, so she helped me get where I am and I think I helped her along the way as well. Um, but it was just an incredible experience playing with her. So. Were you aware of the chance to break the record that day against Monmouth last week? Um, yes, because so around the time of the Maris game, someone had told me that I was about to beat the record, and I kind of just laughed. Mm -hmm. I was like, what are you talking about? What record? And they're like, yeah, you're like two goals off like the point record. And I was like, what are you talking about? No, I'm not. And it happened to be true because I ended up looking it up. And then Marist, I was shut out. So I was like, oh, maybe that's the curse of finding out the, that I was about to beat the point record. What some people might not know is that you've been very successful from right at the start of freshman year. And that has been a major contribution to you being able to break the point record. What about your game allowed you to come right to Quinnipiac and make that immediate impact? I honestly think it was my high school career. Um, I came from a state championship team. Um, so we had this kind of attitude about how we ran things and so when I came here I wanted to get on the field right away. Um, I didn't know if it was going to be possible but I hoped that high school prepared me and I really think it did because I learned a lot about the game. I learned a lot about how to play it and it also helped that my teammates when I did come here were so willing to help me because they saw so much potential in me. So, like Marissa, Caraleo, Sarah Allen, Devin Gibney, like they were all people that helped me along the way to get where I am. Now, fast forward back to this current season. You got senior day coming up against Siena. You'll have one more home game after that. That game's on the 18th of this month. What's that going to be like, those last couple of games on the Quinnipiac field? It's going to be crazy, a mixed emotions, I guess. Um, I've really approached the season as a blessing more than something that. I'm going to be upset about when it's over. Um, it's been a blessing that I've been able to play for four years at the collegiate level, so that's really what I'm going in thinking about. I mentioned that you've got a couple of regular season games left, four to be exact. We talked about how you're over the 200 point mark now. Where do you think that total will wind up? Where do you think you can get to? I'm not sure. Um, I really don't want to make a guess because I don't want to jinx myself, but hopefully I can push away a little bit. Last question before I let you go. What are you most proud of in your four years here at Quinnipiac? You've had a lot of accomplishments. What stands out for you? It isn't even on the lacrosse field, actually. I'm just proud of the person I've become because lacrosse has taught me how to grow up. Um, Danny Carroll, our coach, she's I have a lot of respect for her, and she's made me mature as a person. So that's what I'm most proud of. It isn't even what's on the field. On the field, off the field, a lot of accomplishments. And the 200 and two points currently, looks like that number is going to keep going up for Kira Aqua. Kira, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good luck the rest of the year, Kira Aqua. Quinnipiac Women's Across all-time leading point scorer. We'll be tracking her the rest of the year. We're going to check out men's and women's across on the other side of our next break. I'll give you some predictions for how I think those teams will fare. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Bobcat Shop, located at 1010 Sherman Avenue in Hamden. Your number one choice for Bobcat merchandise. The Bobcat Shop features two floors of countless styles and colors. With a full 19,000 square foot screen printing and embroidery operation on the premises, Campus Customs and Simplify can design and decorate any garment or promotional product as quickly as needed. Stop in and say hi. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. 
We offer an array of services from basic cuts and colors to lash extensions and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your cue card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203-239-6477 to make your next appointment at a sheer sensation. Welcome back to Bobcat Breakdown. Let's move to men's lacrosse now. Quinnipiac currently sits in third place with a 2-2 two two conference record despite being just 3-7 overall. Michael Sagel leads the team with 34 points while Jack Brust and Colin Nesdale have split time as netminders with Brust seeing about 70% of the playing time and having generally better numbers. Now on the women's lacrosse side, you know who leads the way as we just chatted with the all-time leading scorer, Kira Aquat in our last segment. The senior has 30 goals and 12 assists so far for the Bobcats, while Sam Tilts continues to serve as the primary netminder for the squad. QU always has a chance with Aquat on the field, but the team allows the most shots per game in the league, and the 1-3 MAC record reflects that. It's predict prediction time once again here on Bobcat Breakdown, and we'll stay with the women's lacrosse team to start things off. As previously mentioned, Quinnipiac always has a chance as long as Aquat is playing, but the other teams in the conference have more depth, and it shows on a week-to-week -week basis. Canisius is looking for its fifth straight MAC tournament crown, and if anybody is going to end that streak, it will probably be Marist. I don't expect Quinnipiac to be a factor. But we're going to jump back to the men's side to finish things off. On this side, I would be surprised if Quinnipiac men's lacrosse did not finish in the top four to make the conference tournament, but I'd be even more surprised if it won the whole thing. QU looks as, it is, as if it has the goods to win a first-round matchup as either the two or the three seed, but the currently undefeated and top seed at Maris Red Foxes appear poised to take the conference title in 2015. That's all the time we have on today's special edition of Bobcat Breakdown. Don't forget to follow Q30 Sports and QBSN on Twitter. And check out today's episode of Breakdown on Q30 Television at Q30Television.com. For our entire production crew, I'm Mark Spillane. Thank you for watching.